Welcome to my world, welcome to my studio. This is the channel that we like to share information on for jewelers and goldsmiths and folk that are just interested in what we do. Like, subscribe and bell icon as per usual, thank you very much. We would love to get this uh, channel up and running as successful as it can be. Anyway, today, as promised last week, we are talking about repairing and maintenance on a line bracelet. This line bracelet is diamonds and platinum. We have to look at the jewelry that's made, whether you made it yourself, whether you have a customer that comes in and asks your opinion about it. It's important with especially moving parts, uh, like chains, pendants. It's important to keep your eye on it to make sure that it's secure, that you can tell the customer everything is all right. Line bracelets, and especially ones with diamonds like this one we're dealing with over here, incredibly important because if the, if the bracelet's got a weak link somewhere or it's got a worn area, you stand to lose a lot of money. So we tend to want to motivate our customers, depending on the piece once again, this particular bracelet, I put a little reminder on my diary and I let her know every six months. Let me just have a look at it. Let's just make sure everything's all right. It's got some age to it. It's, it's got some wear and tear that we needed to look at. And this is what this video is all about. So what you've noticed on this one here is we've got a clasp area which is completely broken. Now, it's one of them spring clasps that move up and down. There's always gonna be a weak spot on the bracelet somewhere. And in this particular case, on that weak spot is where the entire push mechanism broke off. Clean this bracelet or clean whatever you're working on incredibly well before you start. So the very first thing I need to do is to remove this clasp, take it away from the rest of the uh, bracelet. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is I've also spotted some wear and tear underneath the clasp area itself. So the wires are still strong, but the area where it hooks through is paper thin. So we have to take this off so that I can replace that com uh, complete area, but at the same time also rebuild the clasp so that we've got a functioning clasp. One could take the entire clasp mechanism and just completely replace the entire thing, which is a good thing to do. But in this case, and you have to judge every item on its merit, I'm not quite sure what solders they used over here, and it's my fear that I'm gonna start working on replacing the clasp, and it looks like a bit messy underneath the area where the clasp is connected. I didn't wanna take a risk there, and I know that if I replace just part of it and I do it correctly, we can get to the same result. So I start off by taking the clasp, the area which is worn, I'm cutting off completely, and from that, I'm cleaning up the edges and bringing a piece of wire to bridge between the two parts. Typically with platinum, I would go with the hardest solder I possibly can, but you might notice that I'd left the diamond in this particular setting. Now, the reason again, looking at the actual item itself, you might find that the item is constructed with a solder which is questionable. So I know that if I bring a very high solder in over here, first of all, I have to remove the diamond because they do burn in platinum. I'm, I'm not sure if the entire box is gonna collapse. So I'm using a medium solder, which I know the diamonds can handle. And I'm working with a very hard flame, very quick on the areas where I need to solder to get the best possible connection I can. I've measured out the thickness of the bar that I need to replace. I'm bringing in a plate all the way from the, from, from the top. And the reason for this is that it's easier for me to hold the plate and shape the little part that I need, and then to cut out the little section and then solder it on than what it would be for me just to work with a thin wire. Most important here is I'm not just doing a straightforward solder from one point to the next like that. I'm putting an angle on this one and I'm putting an angle on that one so that I don't just have the single area over here touching, but I've got a longer, bigger section touch, touching. To, almost like a scarf joint, except we don't have any of the if the cutouts, it's just a, it's rather than soldering it like this, I'm angling it and I'm soldering it like that. So we've got more area connecting. It's a stronger solder. And for something that has a mechanism, I would suggest this kind of thing all the way. So once I've soldered it on, shaped, and I've strengthened it by taking a little plier and squeezing it. So any movement on that material will give it some toughness. I'm doing whatever I can to take the weakness that we've created with the soldering and to harden the metal again. And this way it just, it retains its spring. And at the same time, it, uh, it, we, we're creating a, a harder metal around the area where it's soldered rather than leaving it soft. This stuff is called boracic acid. It's like a, a white powdery kind of substance. I mix it in with uh, isopropyl alcohol. And once I've done that, it separates and you have this kind of mixture over here. 
once you've got this kind of mixture you've got basically like a paste at the bottom now if you spin that around everything mixes in quite nicely i cover the diamonds with this i cover the diamonds uh, to give it that little bit of extra protection any dirt behind the stone will stick to the stone so what i'm trying to do is clean it as as best as i possibly can and then from there onwards put this isopropyl and uh, boracic acid mix on top of it that burns onto the stone first and if there is anything that i missed stuck under a claw or something the first contact you're going to have is going to be this boracic acid and the boracic acid will sort of burn onto the stone and protect the surface so a very good paste to make in the workshop for yourself i highly recommend it works really well for keeping the surface clean as well if you're working with something with a plating on it or you want to keep a texture looking good that's the stuff i use so if the plate comes out like this i need something that basically sits on top of it like this i made a small little i took actually a small piece of wire uh, maybe a 1.1 millimeter 1.2 millimeter wire i flattened that slightly filed it so that it's nice nice and smooth and soldered that on top of it where the finger makes contact with the clasp that part's fixed and just to round off that entire section also where it bends at the top since we've moved it a little bit to to repair it where the bend is in the actual mechanism just there that's usually where most of the stress sits you know it takes most of the tension i filled a little piece of solder in there as well because i thought i saw perhaps a slight little bit of weakness on there so i refilled that area and again came with a plier and squeezed it as hard as i can you can take a little hammer and hammer it as well but a plier does a job for me and you can actually test the tension thereafter to make sure it does its job all right so i fixed the part which was worn where the wires ran through and then i went and i added on the plate and i created a little bar that was missing by soldering it at an angle so it's nice and strong i hardened that up with a plier i've added the little cushion where you where your finger goes on but it's still not going to work because the area which broke off has a notch in it and it's the weakest point there it obviously was a little bit too deep but now this new plate that i've that I've, that I've made on the mechanism doesn't have a notch on. So what I'm doing here is I'm using this mechanism, sliding it into the other part of the clasp and making a note exactly where that notch was. I do this by making a little line as deep as it goes in, making a little line on it and then go slightly off that line and then gently going down with a BB phrase just slightly so that I know that when that mechanism slides in that it clicks and it holds. Bringing the whole part back together should be exactly the same as taking it apart. I bring the wires through the new, newly created support area, bring it back to the back area and then solder it as it was. Now there's two other wires that I spotted lower down on the bracelet which were actually not soldered. All I needed to do is to bring a plier in, squeeze those wires right back to where they were supposed to be and re-tack them with the solder on the sides now bracelet is completely repaired i've tested it the clip works beautifully and we are ready for the polish and to contact the customer it's important to encourage your customers to bring their jewelry back or to contact them and let them know that you'd like to see it to make sure that the mechanisms involved holding their precious stones or their sentimental jewelry is doing exactly what it should do we're having a lot of fun making these videos i keep saying it but it is a lot of fun anyway thank you uh, like, subscribe, and bell icon. Make us strong. See you next week. Bye. Hey, wait. Next, uh, next week. Let's talk about next week. Favorite tools. My current favorite tools in the workshop. It should be interesting.